that's okay. So look, I, I'm half the IMUC team. I thank you. I know, this is a repeat session, I think, isn't it? Right? It is. Um, but yeah, thanks for taking the time out to present. And um, yeah, I'll hand it over to you. So oh, hi, uh, thanks for coming to this Sunday session. My name is Petr Sudicki and I'll be presenting uh, this gallery module of ours. Um, let me first introduce in a couple of moments uh, the place we are, we are at at the moment and, and our new site. So uh, many greetings from Brno, Czech Republic. Uh, we're here at the Faculty of Arts at Masaryk University. Uh, which is somewhat the biggest university in the Czech Republic and we are running Moodle for the Faculty of Arts. Um, our team has about nine to ten people and it's a little bit specific because uh, uh, the whole team is uh, made up uh, of students only, uh, PhD students, MA students, all sorts, but we don't have any, any like uh, normal, let's say, in quotation marks, Admins, so it's done by students, as well as the teacher counseling, which is which is done by us as well. So, uh, a bit of a specific situation here. But anyway, uh, we've got a quite a history with Moodle, uh, about 11 years now, and I'll be talking about the gallery module, which uh, was programmed originally for uh, Moodle 1.5, I think. And when we switched to Moodle 2 Plus, uh, we had to uh, come up with a new solution. And for some time, uh, we started using the Lightbox Gallery, which was, and I'm not sure whether it still is, uh, in the plugin database. But it wasn't that uh, what we needed. So uh, finally, we decided to reprogram the old gallery into uh, Moodle 2. And so this is what I'll be presenting today. Uh, we are currently on Moodle 2.5, but we are planning to switch to 2.7 during the summer. It's always the summer time, so we always skip uh, one version because uh, there's only time to do it during the summer break where there's actually no teachers and students so that we have enough time for testing and, and stuff. Um, so uh, let's just... Uh, take a short look at the presentation outline. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, the module general features and then some somewhat more advanced features and settings. Uh, some time devoted to uh, live demo and, and uh, a few examples how uh, this module is being used uh, in our Moodle site by, by our teachers. And then I'll sum up some future perspectives for uh, further development of this module. And I'll be happy if you have any uh, questions after that. Uh, so, uh, starting with the old module, which I was talking about, which was a uh, program for Moodle 1.5 up to 1.9. Uh, this is what it used to look like uh, when we decided to reprogram the module for Moodle 2. Uh, this was the base, uh, the basic outlook, uh, the way the, the module should look, because uh, some of the teachers uh, at the faculty are actually using this uh, instead of uh, normal PowerPoint presentations during their lectures. So they just uh, uh, open up Moodle and uh, go to this gallery and use it as a presentation tool uh, for their students. Uh, of course, this is a, a module which handles images, so it's very suitable for uh, areas such as archaeology, history, art, and, and so on. But it can be actually used for, for any, any other subjects where the teacher needs to uh, show up some uh, images and image galleries. Uh, so starting with the, with the current module and with the general features, uh, the reason why we actually uh, programmed this module was to have uh, all the images stored in one place in a course. Uh, there's actually other possibilities of doing this, like using the database module, uh, 
which I saw in a very interesting presentation yesterday. Uh, some people were using files and, and, and so on, but we wanted uh, to have a, a specific module for handling images and, and other visual artifacts for the courses. Uh, it has got some very basic editing capabilities, nothing uh, like uh, cropping or resizing uh, images, but you can rotate them, you can uh, sort them in, an, in the order you want to. Uh, I'll show that in a minute. You can move them around in the gallery. And what's, uh, what was demanded by teachers uh, and what we implemented was uh, the different modes of presentation of the images. You have the thumbnail mode where you can see all the thumbnails uh, of all the images on one page. Uh, you can have the presentation mode, which I was uh, briefly mentioning. And you can also have the full screen mode where you can browse through the gallery uh, as with the other uh, visual artifact sites, let's say, such as Picasa, Flickr, and, and so on. Uh, so let's let's have a look at some of the general features. Uh, this is what the uh, module can look like uh, at the course page. Uh, you can see that we implemented this thumbnail belt, uh, which is interactive. So you can browse through that through all the all of the pictures, uh, in, uh, the images in the gallery directly on the course page using the, the arrows on the left and on the right. And if you click on, on the selected image, it will go directly to the presentation mode. But I'll be talking about uh, this thumb, thumbnail belt uh, in more detail later in the settings section. So this is just um, a brief overview of the course page and uh, on the module on the course page. Uh, with the editing capabilities, uh, this is the thumbnail mode. And you can see that you have these uh, little icons attached to each image. So you can uh, improve the, the settings. You can rotate that left to right. Uh, you can move that around and you can delete uh, the particular image. Uh, so these are the editing capabilities available in the module at the moment. So actually, uh, there is no uh, way of as I said, cropping the images or resizing. Uh, actually, if you if you uploading uh, images of different sizes into the gallery module, uh, it gets resized uh, for the presentation mode or for the full screen mode as well. But there's also the possibility to get to the original file, which I'll be talking about in a minute. Uh, rotating and moving. Uh, the images around in the gallery if you want to sort them uh, differently uh, because when you upload uh, the images which can be done in bulk or uh, one by one, uh, I'll show that in the live demo, uh, it gets sorted according to uh, the image name. So if you want to uh, resort that somehow, you can do it by again dropping the image around in the thumbnail mode like this, so you don't have to use any arrows, you just drag and drop it. And uh, you can also use uh, bulk editing uh, by selecting uh, some of the images and then using this uh, menu, uh, drop down menu at the bottom. You can do the same things uh, with more than one image. And you can also download some of the images from the gallery. You, if you need to. And this will download the original versions, the file. Um, I was talking about the different display modes of the gallery. So uh, this is the thumbnail node uh, where you can see all the thumbnails of all the images in the gallery on one page. And this is also the place where you can do some of the editing. Uh, you can then click on the selected image and you go to this presentation mode where you have the selected image on the right somewhat bigger and all the thumbnails of the other images on the left. And you can browse through the thumb thumbnails independently. So you, can, you don't have to uh, go one by one when you want to uh, go through the gallery, but you can skip images 
and go uh, to the selected one. And this is what, what the teachers actually use for presentations. And they wanted to have the current image uh, with all the descriptions and other things, which I'll show you later. And to have the possibility to see the thumbnails on the right or somewhere, uh, and to be able to go to a specific image that they need to talk about next. So this is what we uh, try to implement. And then you can also have the full screen mode, which is a light box function. Uh, and you can browse through the, uh, through the images in the full screen mode as well by clicking on the arrows on the left and the right, as you uh, are definitely familiar from the other uh, gallery sites on the net. Uh, so much for the, uh, for the basic features. Let's now talk a bit about uh, the settings and other things you can do with the gallery at the moment. Um, I've already shown you uh, for a while the interactive thumbnail belt at the course page, which is a uh, quite nice feature, not, not only uh, like being able to go to a specific image directly, but it, it's a nice feature uh, in the course as such, makes it more uh, visually attractive, uh, which, is, which is pretty nice. Uh, you can have uh, links to the original image files uh, shown uh, with each image. So as I said, uh, the images get resized when they are uh, in the presentation mode. But if uh, teachers use somewhat uh, detailed images, and I'll show you some of the examples, uh, like for the archaeology courses or history maps or, or something like that, uh, they sometimes need to have the original image there as well for the students to uh, access that and uh, see all the details. So you can, you can click on the link and go, go to, the, to the original image file, unresized. Uh, uh, what, we, what we wanted the teachers to, uh, what we wanted to force the teachers to actually, was to list sources for each image because this is something that they were not really paying attention to when downloading images and scanning images and things like that. So uh, we implemented this function that you can't save uh, the image without listing a source. And I'll show you that uh, during the live demo. So it's, it's either your image or you have to specify uh, at least the website where, where the image was taken from. Uh, you can have file attachments uh, for each image individually, uh, which can be useful for things like uh, sheet music, where you have the, the sheet music in the gallery, and you can attach uh, the sound file directly to, to the image. Or you can have a, a photo of a, uh, of a drawing, and you can have uh, a sound file in the same uh, style attach and so on for each image individual. And for each image, you can have uh, the image description and also comments, which can be inserted by the teachers in the course and as, as well as by the students. Uh, we also wanted the gallery to not, not to be only a resource, but uh, somewhat more interactive uh, module. So we implemented some permission adjustments so that uh, students can actually contribute uh, to the gallery with their own images. And uh, similar to uh, quizzes and stuff, uh, they can then uh, edit and delete and, and uh, insert their own images, upload their own images into the gallery without affecting the images of the other people and the teachers. I'll show you that uh, live uh, in a minute. So this is what the uh, settings page look like. It's quite simple. Uh, there are some of the things I've been talking about so far. Starting with the thumbnail belt, uh, similar to the uh, display description on the course page setting, this can be uh, uh, ticked and then you can, you can have the, the interactive thumbnail belt on the course page. So it looks like this. And you can browse through the images and click on the, on the selected one to see it uh, in a larger in a larger way. Uh, 
links to the original images. Again, you don't have to have that in the gallery if you don't want to, but you can enable that. It's, it's an optional feature. Uh, you can then have the, the link to the original image displayed in the presentation mode directly below uh, the particular image. And if you click on that, uh, you have a pop-up window with the original file where the students actually can also download the original uh, original image if they, if they need to, if they need to work with that uh, later and so on. And here you can see the listing of, of the source which is required. Um, yeah, that's the pop-up window. Uh, image attachments for each for each image uh, a file attachment uh, can be enabled. Uh, again, you have that uh, below the, the particular image. You can download the file, uh, and here you can see the description of, of the of the selected image. So there's no not one description for the uh, for the whole gallery only, but each picture can have a text description attached. Um, and this is the table with the permission adjustments. So you can see that there are two enhancements. You can edit your own images and you can delete your own images. And in this way, the gallery uh, can serve the purposes of you know, a virtual uh, presentation or gallery for, for students when they go to a practical training, for example, and they bring uh, pictures uh, from that and they want to share it in the course, so you can enable them to uh, upload that into a shared gallery. You can you can state up competitions uh, of student images and so on. Um, so a few examples uh, of use of the of the module in our Moodle site. Uh, this is a history course or, or museology or something like that, uh, where the teacher uh, posted up a tutorial how to actually make uh, seals, uh, the old ones, the, the wax ones, uh, in the course for the students to see. Uh, and it was done in the gallery, so the students immediately saw the whole process uh, through the thumb thumbnails. And they could go to the gallery and, and see some more description about that. Uh, this is another gallery with uh, the examples of ancient languages uh, from the Mediterranean. Uh, this actually was, was one of the teachers who demanded the new module to be reprogrammed because she is using the gallery as a, as a presentation tool. And she also needed uh, to have the, the link to the original image files there because some of the photographs are pretty detailed and, and the students need to see all the, all the tiny details uh, in the pictures of these, of these ancient artifacts. Um, and the last example I have here is a virtual exhibition of medieval uh, weapons. Uh, Another archaeology course. Uh, I'm presenting the uh, the history archaeology courses here because it's uh, the most interesting thing how to use the gallery uh, at the moment with the courses we have here. But you can use that for uh, scanned images and you can use that for language learning and, and things like that as well. So before. Yeah, before skipping to uh, our future plans with this module, uh, let me uh, just uh, go to our Moodle site. Try to do it by desktop sharing. Hope it works. A moment. Let's set it up. Yeah, I hope you can see uh, the desktop now here. Um, 
I hope I, I hope you can see the live demo. Just, uh, can you confirm that? Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so this is one of the courses in our module in our Moodle. Sorry, uh, and uh, this is the uh, there are two examples of uh, an actual gallery uh, filled with images. And this is the thumbnail belt uh, at the course page. So you can, you can browse through the images here. And if you click on the selected one, you go directly to the presentation uh, mode, where you can actually see uh, the current image and all the thumbnails on the right. You can browse through them and select another one, click on that and see it uh, in, on the right. Uh, you can also browse through the images by clicking on these uh, arrows here. Uh, here I have the link to the original image. With, if I click on that, I'll get uh, a pop-up pop window and then uh, just uh, see the original file in its original resolution, so I can really browse through all the details here. Uh, you can see that the source is listed here. This is uh, an image taken by the teacher himself, so it's its name here. And I can also add some comments uh, for the image. And this can be done by students and teachers as well. Um, uh, I, I have the possibility to go back to the thumbnail uh, mode to see all of the images that are included in this particular uh, gallery. And I can then turn the editing on uh, to have all the editing tools available. Uh, you can see all the uh, editing icons here and I can move around uh, the individual images. I could rotate them uh, or delete some of them if I uh, want to get rid of a particular image. And I can do this uh, uh, in bulk. So if I select some of those images, uh, there's the drop down uh, menu, menu for editing. So I can delete more than one image at once. And so on. Uh, if I want to add uh, some images, and this is actually what happens when I uh, set up a new gallery, uh, I just have to click on this Add Images uh, button and upload a zip file. You can actually do it one by one, but you can also uh, upload a zip file, which will be unzipped uh, automatically upon upload. So you don't have to be with that many wrong profession and oh, oh, this uh, window has been resized so a little bug here. Uh, you can now edit uh, the image names which are automatically taken from the file names but you can always edit that. You can add descriptions uh, to the individual images and you can also add attachments here. And this is the part with the source listing. So you, you have to either tick uh, this image as your own or you have to list the source uh, below here. Otherwise, it won't let you save uh, the, the images uh, to be added to the gallery. So this is actually the where you can upload more images images to, a, to an existing gallery or uh, when setting up a new, completely new module. The new images are here at the bottom. And uh, when I take the image as my own, uh, it gets directly linked to my profile page here. So when more than one teacher contribute or when students contribute to the gallery, and with their own images, you can always see who the author is and you can go directly to his profile page. 
adding comments and stuff. And I think this is it for the live demo. Uh, so now switch back uh, to the presentation and briefly talk about some uh, future plans for this module. Uh, at the moment, there are only images which can be uploaded into the gallery. In future, we would like to implement also video upload, either your own uh, video files or videos taken from some uh, cloud storage or internet uh, galleries such as YouTube and other. Uh, we would like also to add some rating capabilities for teachers as well as students and like one to five stars so that the gallery can be used as a as a module for virtual competitions and, and things like that. And we would like also to upgrade the referencing capabilities so that when you use uh, an image from sites like Wikimedia Commons, uh, the source gets uh, listed automatically without having to uh, copy uh, the information from, from, from Wikimedia or, or similar sites. So this is like the uh, part one of the future development plan, uh, stage one. And the stage two uh, is creating a gallery called block, which would act similar to a random glossary entry when you would uh, get an example image from the uh, from the gallery uh, and also uh, creating a gallery quiz question which we think of as a short answer question uh, where the image would be uh, the actual description for the question and and the, the right answers uh, would be taken either from the image description or from the image name so that teachers don't have to, again, copy that if they use uh, the gallery as a teaching resource. Uh, this could be done automatically. Um, so, this is it. And now, if you have any comments and questions, I'll be happy to answer that. And I'll go through that. Uh, extensive comment list here. <laughs> okay. Um, considering the database module, uh, we actually haven't, which is a bit of a uh, drawback here, I guess. But uh, this gallery was this gallery module was actually demanded by the teachers who were used to using the old gallery in Moodle 1.9, and they just uh, wanted to use the same feature from the new uh, Moodle that we have now. Uh, but I saw uh, the presentation about databases yesterday or during the night, and it struck me that, that this is uh, a very similar. So maybe in future we should uh, consider upgrading or just utilizing the database for, for things like this. I have to consult my uh, colleagues as well. But it would be nice to to just merge merge it into the database. Well, not to have another module, I guess. Yeah, it was it was a custom theme, <laughs> and we are getting. Uh, upgraded uh, to 2.7, which will be uh, finally a responsive theme, so it'll change a bit. Thanks. Uh, I'm not sure whether I understand uh, your 
question correctly, Shane. Uh, how do I do it in the interface or how it's done in, in the uh, code, actually? Uh, it gets rotated. Uh, uh, you have to refresh the page, I think, if, if it's not uh, done automatically or immediately. Uh, you have to hit the rotate button and show you maybe. Um, let me get back to the, the Moodle site. I'm not sure here. What you do is just uh, click on the icon and it gets uh, rotated, hopefully. Uh, I would have to ask the programmer, uh, our programmer, whether this is CSS or, or the image is being edited, but I don't think the image is being edited. It's just done in the browser somehow. And it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, thanks, Martin. Yeah. Uh, as I was talking about our team, um, that we are currently uh, a group of students or uh, master and PhD students. This is true for the pro programmer as well. So uh, there's been a little slowdown with the module development. I was hoping to show you more features uh, during the IMU presentation, but uh, our programmer is currently writing his thesis. So he's got a little less time. Uh, so hopefully over the summer, the new features will be implemented. Um, no, they, it can be anything, uh, any size, and it gets resized. Uh, actually, in the, in the new uh, updated version, you can choose uh, what size uh, the image should be resized to. And so there will be several possibilities for the presentation mode because now you have only one one size, but in the uh, in the new version, uh, you will be able to choose from at least three sizes of the of the presentation mode depending on your on the size of your of your uh, LCD or monitor and, and so on. Uh, not yet, Shane. Uh, I'm currently working on it, uh, so I hope it'll be there as soon as possible. But it's not there yet. I can I can always send you. Uh, the code, uh, or you can get in touch with me. Uh, all the contact details are in the in the IMUT course. So, uh, I'll be happy to to get in touch. And we're using GitHub, so I could uh, provide a link for our, uh, for the code there. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, we'll be happy to uh, cooperate on, on this module if anyone would be willing to contribute uh, further. Because as I was uh, saying, uh, the people here are students and uh, the rotation of the team is quite uh, substantial, uh, except for two or uh, one or two colleagues. And if somebody uh, would like to help us with that, we'll be very, very happy about it.
because we are currently uh, looking for a new programmer for the next next year. Good night. Um, actually, lun lunch time here. Czech Republic. Hey, Peter, it's Shane here. I just I thought I'd jump in and just say look, thank you for presenting on behalf of the mm -hmm. IMIT team. Just say thanks. And uh, yeah, no, no, it's good. It's quite interesting, actually. Um, and it looks like you've got Martin thinking about some stuff for the core Moodle, which is always a good sign. Uh, so thanks for that. Well, thanks for your time being here. It's hard. Yeah. And personally, um, I was thinking about the code. It's just me being curious because I do development. So um, it's just mm -hmm. yeah, wondering how some of those things were done. It's always good to look at other people's code and learn. So, um, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to help. I'm just completely overcommitted anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost wrote right in there, yeah, I'll help, but I thought I just honestly won't get to it. <laughs> so yeah. I did not, did not say anything. <laughs> it would be nice to, to have it implemented into the database module, maybe, not to have to uh, care for some other module if the, if the capabilities are, are here with the database, but we'll think about that. Yeah, I think that's what Martin was saying. I think some of it. Is in the database activity, but there's also some very unique things in there too. So um, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, cool. All right, I'd better yeah. run as well. But um, thank you very much for that. And um, this is recorded anyway, so I'll, I might come back and watch it again. And, yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks a lot. See you. Thanks, Peter. Bye. Bye.